Okay, so we identified a list of basic fundamental beliefs about the arithmetic of fractions, which is grand and wonderful. But I should point out, all this is really couched within the arithmetic of numbers in general. For example, I do remember in a previous video saying something like, let's rewrite 7 as 7 times 1. Because what I was doing there is actually evoking a, a rule from arithmetic, because we like to believe that anything times 1 is actually back to itself. That's a fundamental belief about arithmetic in general. So to make this story about fractions complete, let me now go through all the fundamental beliefs about arithmetic in general in which all this sits. Then we'll have on the board a full, robust picture of the arithmetic of fractions. This is going to be a bit of a whirlwind of a video today. I'm going to go through everything. It's going to go through fast. It's going to make our brains hurt. But hopefully it's stuff that's semi-familiar from the past. At least it's going to be just at one spot where we've got everything collected in one place. All right, okay. So our story of numbers usually begins with the counting numbers, not the fractions, the counting numbers. The numbers that literally count things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on and so on. For example, seven days in a week, five fingers on a hand, one of me, and so on. Um, we could actually add another number to this list, the one just before one, namely zero. But actually, humankind really struggled philosophically for many, many centuries about whether zero or not should be considered a counting number. For example, what does it count? Literally nothing. Therefore, it's not really counting. So should it be a counting number? Okay, great big debate, but I'll add zero to my list. It's fine. Um, just to make this discussion concrete, let me actually count something concrete. Now, people who know me know I like dots, so I'm going to say oh, uh, 2 is going to represent dots, a count of dots. Here it is. Here's a picture representing 2. Here's a picture representing 3. 1, 2, 3. 3 dots. So I will count dots. Now, let's see. Let's go through all the things we like to believe about the counting numbers and their arithmetic. Uh, for example, um, sure, I can keep drawing dots for different counting numbers, but now let's start, start doing, let's start doing mathematics with them, namely addition, for example. 2 plus 3. Now, natural way to think of that is draw two dots and add to that picture a picture of the next number, three dots. And bingo, there's two plus three. But I went left to right then. Now, I have never left to right bias in my reading, but maybe actually I could actually look right to left instead. And what would I see if I go right to left? I see three plus two. Oh, oh, okay. Nothing's changed. This is my perspective and how I looked at that picture that's changed. It's still the same picture. So 2 plus 3 has to equal 3 plus 2, and I don't even have to mention the number 5 to actually make that claim. I can just see, philosophically, 2 plus 3 just has to equal 3 plus 2. In the same way, 117 plus 246 would have to equal 246 plus 117. That would be just drawing one picture and looking at it from two different directions. Still the same one picture. So here's one fundamental belief about the counting numbers, which seems patently true for the counting numbers at least, that A plus B equals B plus A. You want to switch the order you want to add the two numbers, feel free. It's just a change of perspective on the picture you're drawing. Uh, people like to say that addition is commutative, a fancy name. But actually, let me point something out. People don't realize this, that addition is actually commutative in a different way, in a, in a second way. For example, let's look at 2 plus 3 plus 4. My picture here would be two dots, and additional three dots, and additional four dots. So there I went left to right again, or I could look that way, fine. But, but, look at this. There's actually two ways I could actually do those additions. I could do this addition first, and this addition second. What would that do? If I did this addition first, then I'll make it, oh, five plus four. And then do this, this addition second, makes it nine. Or, or I could do it the other way around. Do the additions in the other order. Do this one first, and then that one second. Do this one first, makes, oh, two plus seven. And then do that one, now it makes nine. It doesn't matter. In the end, I'll be left with that picture, with the little bars removed. So actually, the order in which you do the actual additions doesn't matter as well. People call that associative. They say addition is associative. Not only does the order of the, the, order of the individual terms not matter, also the order in which you do the actual additions does not matter as well. So addition is, is commutative, and addition is associative. Uh, that's hard to write on the board. We'll just keep that one in our mind. I won't write on the board. But just remember that addition doesn't matter what order you do addition in two senses. The order of the actual terms, the order of the actual additions. Great, great. Um, what more? Uh, uh, or let's look at this number, zero, addition in this number. If I drew a picture of five dots plus no more dots, one, two, three, four, five dots plus no more dots, it's clearly five dots. Okay, bingo. Or if I had no dots and I added five dots to the picture, 
Oh, it's already on the board. There's no dots plus additional five dots is still five dots. So I guess we like to believe that a plus zero is a and zero plus a is also a. In fact, the second one, of course, follows from addition being commutative. So I actually didn't need to write that second one, but it doesn't hurt to write it down. Great. All right, what else is true? Um, well, actually, after addition comes multiplication. And in the world of the counting numbers, multiplication actually manifests itself in terms of repeated addition. For example, 4 times 5. So in this context of the counting numbers, it really is repeated addition. It is 4 groups of 5. Groups of 5. Which means I want a 5 and a 5 and a 5 and a 5. 4 groups of 5. Um, I, I won't bother draw, saying the word 20, but it's four groups of five. But, or I could draw a picture of it. Here's four groups of five. One group of five, a second group of five, a third group of five, and a fourth group of five. There's a picture of four groups of five. What actually astounds me is that this is a completely different quantity, completely different entity. It's not four groups of five, it's literally five groups of four which is a different picture. Five groups of four. Here's one group of four. Here's a second group of four. Here's a third group of four. Here's a fourth group of four. Here's a fifth group of four. There's five groups of four. It's a completely different picture. And what's amazing, what's actually amazing, if you step back from it, it is amazing, they're both the same number of dots. They're both 20 dots in this case. In fact, if you did 117 groups to 243, it'd be a big messy picture, and you did 243 groups, 117 groups, you get another big messy picture, it's actually pretty amazing. You'll have the same number of dots in each picture. It's actually mind-blowing. The trouble is, we've so been trained to believe you just switch the order multiplications and not think about it. If you do think about it, it is astounding. So how can I see that it's okay to switch the order of multiplications? Because right now, it looks like they're not switchable. Well, the key is to be a little more systematic in your picture. Let me draw four groups of five again, but let me do it systematically. Let's stack my groups. Here's one group of five, four, five. Here's a second group of five. Here's a third group of five. And here, whoops, not a very neat picture. And here's my fourth group of five. Three, four, five. There's four groups of five. Looking this way, I see as rows, four groups of five. But if I change perspective again, look this way, I'm seeing five columns. I'm actually seeing five columns of four, five groups of four. And it's the same picture, it's the same dots. All I'm doing is changing my viewpoint on that one picture. It must be the same count of dots in the end. I don't have to say the word 20. I know four times five must be the same group, the number of dots as five times four, which I'm looking at that picture. Beautiful. Multiplication is commutative. We like to believe that A times B is B times A. Certainly seems painfully obvious for the counting numbers. We like to believe that's true in general for all numbers. All right, great. Um, grand, this is good. Let me keep going. Um, let's see. Oh, let's do what I did previously. I did seven groups of one. If I drew a picture of that, one group of one, second group of one, third group of one, fourth group of one, five, six, seven groups of one. Oh, that's seven dots, seven dots. Or if I did one group of seven, oh, there's one group of seven, done it. It's also seven dots. So I guess another special property we like to believe is that A times one is A. And if you want to switch this around, feel free. But I'll write on the board just to be, uh, I don't know, complete or something. Bingo. We also believe that multiplying by one doesn't change the number, which is what we had earlier on. Oh, there's a curious one. This is a curious one. How about five groups of zero? Here it goes, I'm going to draw it. Nothing, and nothing, and nothing, and nothing, and nothing. Gives me nothing. Ha! Um, since I like to believe I can switch the order of multiplications, zero groups of five would also have to be nothing as well. All right, so I guess I like to believe that a times zero is zero, and zero times a is also zero. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, that reminds me. I think I skipped over something interesting. I've been using that multiplication is commutative in this sense on those two ones right there. Is it also commutative in the other sense? That if I did 2 times 3 times 4, well, we do like to believe. If you want to do that multiplication first and that one second, feel free. You, we like to believe you get the same result as doing the other way around. Do that one first and that one second. Either way, it's going to be 24. All right, so there's a big belief. We actually do like to believe that multiplication is associative as well. It doesn't actually matter which order you do the actual terms of the multiplication, and it doesn't matter which order you actually do the actual multiplications themselves. Beautiful. Okay, I think that's my list of everything there for addition alone, multiplication alone. Um, let's start combining them. Let's start combining them. 
Okay, so let me do a really complicated example. Let's now draw a picture of 20 groups of 30 dots. We have plenty of time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be crazy. One row of 30, second row of 30, third row of 30, fourth row of 30. Okay, there's no way you want me to do this. But you know in the end, if I really had the patience, I'll have one great big rectangle of dots. 20 rows, 30 columns. In fact, let me not even bother drawing the dots. Let me just use a rectangle to represent 20 rows and 30 columns of dots. Bingo, that's 20 rows, 30 columns. Uh, that will be a total of 600 dots. 600 dots in that picture. But here's the amazing thing. If you like, we could chop this picture up. If I chop this up into, say, 10 rows and 10 rows, that's still 20 rows, and change this to, say, 20 rows and 10 rows, then this little sub-picture here is 10 rows, 20 columns. I can see, oh, that's going to be 200 dots. This one's going to be 10 rows, 20 columns. That's also going to be 200 dots. This is going to be 10 rows, 10 columns. It'll be 100 dots. 10 rows, 10 columns, 100 dots. And look, 200 plus 200 plus 100 plus 100 is still 600. Okay, or if I chop up the rectangle a different way. Well, if I chop this up into, say, uh, let's make it like uh, this, 15 and 5 and 15 and 15. Ooh, I don't think I'd be nice to myself. Let's see, uh, 15 times 15, that's, uh, oh gosh, uh, 225, I believe. 15 rows, 15 columns, 225. 5 times 15 is 75. 5 times 15 is 75. Uh, oh golly gee, um, oh, that's 300. That's 300, adds up to 600. Whoa, I bet if I did a truly nasty one, we'll still get 600 dots. If I made this 17 rows and three, three rows, and I made this one 26 rows, columns and four columns, so it's still 20 by 30, I bet if you have the patience to work these out, it'll still add up to 600 dots. Because all I'm doing is chopping up the same rectangle of 600 dots every single time. So the other rule we like to believe is what's called the distributive rule, which says we can chop up rectangles. Chop up rectangles, and the answer is yes, you can do it. Feel free to chop up rectangles. Now, most people don't think of the distributive rule that way. That's actually what the distributive rule is. That's the natural, intuitive way to think of the distributive rule. Instead, people say, no, 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 no. You have to memorize a little, little algebra uh, equation that A times B plus C equals A times B plus A times C. That's how most people are taught the distributive rule. But what's it really doing? It's actually chopping up a rectangle. It's saying this, if I have a rectangle of A rows and B plus C columns, B plus C, well, think of it as B columns and C columns. Then I'll get one piece that's A rows, B columns, must give you A times B dots. This one must be A rows, B co C columns, gives you A times C dots. Oh, the total number of dots in the rectangle must be this many dots plus that many dots. So the standard distributive rule that people learn actually is just chopping up a rectangle. So feel free to chop up rectangles, more complicated rectangles than that one, and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Another belief that seems right for the counting numbers that we like to believe is true in general. But let's keep going. Um, okay, okay, what's more is there? There's more, there's always more. I told you there's gonna be a lot in this, this, this particular video today. Um, that seems pretty good for the counting numbers, but we know that we don't just stick with the counting numbers. For example, the counting numbers are great at solving equations like this. X plus three equals eight. Is there a counting number that makes that a true sentence about numbers? Well, yes, this counting number will work. That will give me a true sentence right there. But the counting numbers aren't very good at a, this variation of the equation. X plus eight equals three. There's no counting number that's gonna give me truth in a sentence like that. So people say, well, I guess we need more types of numbers. And they say, well, let's do the opposite of the counting numbers. Let's do the negative numbers. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, and so on. Then there's gonna be a number that works. Negative five plus eight, we like to believe, is three. All right, so what are these negative numbers? So we like to believe there's these opposites. So if I draw a number, well, I was doing a dot for the number one. One is a dot. Negative one, let me draw as the opposite of a dot. And people know me, I know I'm gonna call it an anti-dot. And the idea of being opposite is the following. If I take a dot and I put it together with an anti-dot, it's like matter and antimatter come together and poof, and actually give you that picture right there. Period, that picture right there. They just disappear and give me zero. Zero. They truly are opposites in that sense. Which means then, I can now do arithmetic with them. For example, what's five plus the opposite of three? Negative three. Well, that would be five dots. Three, four, five. Three anti-dots. Oh, dot, anti-dot, poof. 
dot anti dot poof dot anti dot poof that gives me two so i can now can do arithmetic with these negative numbers as well by the way people don't like me doing five plus the opposite of three they say james you should have called that subtraction if you watch some of my videos you know i don't believe subtraction exists to me subtraction is the addition of the opposite then actually life is much easier to think that way all right so what have we got here we got here that the rule is that we like to believe well how am i write this we like to believe that there are anti-versions that exist, oh, where am I put this, um, such that A plus its anti-version gets you nothing, and I guess by commutivity, the anti-version plus the, plus, plus the number also gives you nothing. So we like to believe there's these things called the opposites of the counting numbers, which have that basic property. Whoa, whoa, I guess we also like to believe these things that were true, so obviously true for the counting numbers, are actually true for these negative numbers as well. That's, that's, now, we're getting, now you're starting to see why I use the word belief. What seems patently true for counting numbers, we're now saying, well, it just seems natural. These, these are so obvious. Surely they hold for negative numbers as well. And surely they hold in general for a larger system numbers like the fractions. But anyhow, that's, that's going to be the next video. Let's talk about what the word belief means there. But I think I have on the board right now all the pieces uh, that I need to make this a complete, a robust story of arithmetic. All the basic arithmetic of numbers. Don't forget to add associativity here and associativity there. And of just basic numbers in general, along with the fundamental beliefs about these things called fractions. All right, we are now set to get going and do all the arithmetic of fractions.